we are on the warpath. Not just a war with AEW, but on the road to war games. The next NXT TakeOver. I see what you did there, WWE. This is NXT Graded. We kick off tonight from Full Sail University with the first match back for Tommaso Ciampa. Oh, it's so good to see Ciampa again. And he looks genuinely like he is delighted to be back as well. He's up against Angel Garza in our opening contest. Angel Garza just played a blinder here. Like just constantly this smile on this face, this, this arrogant grin as the crowd are wailing, Champa's gonna kill you. He's just smiling at them. He actually gets a fair bit in here against Champa. This is Champa's comeback. So the majority of this is Champa, but you know what? Garza looks good on the way down. Uh, after a offensive flurry from Garza, he stands in the center of the ring, rips his trousers off, they're chaps, aren't they? So he's just got his pads on and he hoys the chaps at Champa. And this, obviously, maybe Champa had a bad experience with chaps as a child because this just lights him up, just wails on Garza, hoys him into the corner, batters him in the corner, gives him the running face wash and then grabs the chaps that Garza threw at him. He puts the chaps in the corner, stomps on the chaps, Runs across the ropes, boom, face wash kick to the chaps. Those chaps had a family. Champa uses the chaps once again. <laughs> I've said the word chaps quite a bit in this already. We're only about a minute in. He throws him into the face of Angel Garza as Garza's getting back into the ring and nails him with that hanging rope DDT that is now called Willow's Bell. He has named a devastating, brain crushing finishing move after his daughter. How wholesome is Champa? One, two, three, and Tommaso Champa. Big win, big return for him. He hasn't got time to celebrate it because the Undisputed Era come out and they sort of circle the wagons here. And then Champa's in the ring, armed with his trusty camo crutch and his chair. And they decide to, maybe this isn't the day, to, to mess with Champa. So we're gonna take a, take a step back here. Not before Roderick Strong heads over to the announce table and hands Mara Ronaldo a USB drive. Now, if this was 2001, I'd know for a fact that a USB drive would contain some really bit-crunched Happy Hardcore that I downloaded off Napster and a key gen for Sims Hot Date, the expansion pack. But who knows what's on it in 2019? We're going to find out in a bit. Giving this opening segment an A, NXT come flying out of the blocks every single week. This was a great way to get the crowd up and ready for the night. And you know what? Angel Garza look good in defeat here. This wasn't just like this wipe the floor with Garza. Garza got enough of his own stuff in here to make me believe that there are future plans for him. But Champa's back. That's the real story here. Welcome back, Daddy Champa. We find out what was on the USB drive and it was footage of the Undisputed Era backstage showing the damage they have done to a prone, unconscious Velveteen Dream. Roderick Strong, whose shirt is ripped, is getting in the face of the unconscious Dream saying, that's what happens when you embarrass me. That's what happens when you embarrass me. And Adam Cole very much saying, very much putting out the message to the entire locker room that they are not to be taken lightly anymore and sends out a warning across the bow to Finn Balor and Tommaso Ciampa in the process as well. So as we recover from seeing our Velveteen Dream all battered backstage, straight into tag team action, only Lorcan and Danny Burch taking on Fabian Eichner and Marcel Barthel from Imperium. I'm so happy to see so much NXT UK love on the Wednesday nights on USA. It's really cool to see Imperium getting some love here. And these guys just went hell for leather. This is, this was just four guys who had a whole bunch of strikes and just thought, let's use them all at the same time. Uh, uh, Danny Birch and only Lorcan are a great team. Birch took a lot of the beating in the early stages of this match. Lorcan got the hot tag and Lorcan just throws himself everywhere. Like, hoys himself outside the ring. He's throwing himself at Eichner and at Barthel. In fact, if you want some really good, like heavy striking offense, some quite snug wrestling, as they would say in the past, uh, look at all the all the bits between Eichner and Lorcan. They're really, I, I think they fell out backstage. They're really going for it. 
Eichner hits a beauty of a double springboard moonsault for a two count in the closing stages of this match. Lorcan rallies uh, as Birch is out on the outside, uh, but it's not enough. Lorcan eats a spine buster, a penalty kick, and a European bomb. One, two, three. Imperium continue their winning ways. And this was great. This was a short, sweet, crisp, action packed punch and kick fest with some. Decent tag, to, tag team offense chucked in there as well. Given this an A, this was another blistering match. Short, sweet, but very intense to start NXT. I feel like WWE have kind of cultivated this, this new style with NXT, where it's just get to like the final third of the match immediately. I like it personally. We get an emotional hype video for Johnny Gargano talking about how he's always been a wrestling fan. We chronicle DIY, we chronicle his NXT Championship run, and then we go backstage from earlier today where Kathy Kelly was chatting to Johnny Gargano about the return of Tommaso Ciampa, asking how things are between you two. And Gargano says, I don't know, I think I'll know when I see you. See, they, there is unfinished business between Gargano and Ciampa. The injury that Ciampa suffered sort of put paid to the, the final act of their, of their show. So I'm glad that they're referencing this and I don't really have an issue with them picking this up a little bit further down the road because I'd like us to finish wrapping up this beautiful gift that is Gargano and Ciampa. Io Shirai screams her way out to the ring next. One of my favorite entrances in WWE today. She's going one-on-one -on -one with Kayla Carter. I imagine people in the 2K office aren't particularly excited about the rise of Kayla Carter. They're watching her going, oh gosh, the hair physics on her are gonna be a nightmare when we get there. Carter looks great in the early going of this, like some heavy strikes, some fast-paced offense. She goes to kick Io Shirai in the head from the apron, but then Io grabs Carter's foot and just sends her flying into the hardest part of the apron. Uh, from there, Carter gets a little bit of a flurry, but this is all Io Shirai. Big springboard drop kick, uh, elevated Empress German suplex, and a moonsault for the one, two, three. Io Shirai wins the match. She gets on the mic and she's about to read the riot act to the entire NXT women's division, which brings out Rhea Ripley. And Rhea Ripley says, do not ever spit my name out of your mouth or I'll, there'll be trouble. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> there'll be trouble, you naughty. I'm watching you, you cheeky. That is exactly what she said. Looks like they're going to get into it and then Io Shirai just rolls out the ring and takes a powder. There'll be another day. There'll be another day. B minus for me for this one. Really good match between two very strong performers. And I like the fact that we've now got other feuds in the women's division that isn't about the championship. Like, I like the fact that we're, ne we're now getting the depth back into the NXT women's division. Kathy Kelly meets up with William Regal on the balcony at Full Sail. I know there's rumors that WWE are gonna leave Full Sail soon and they're gonna take NXT on the road. Before they do that, if they eventually do do that, can we at least have somebody dive off that balcony? <laughs> I think it'd be a really good bit. William Regal uh, is asked about Roderick Strong's attack on Velveteen Dream. Uh, Regal tells us that Velveteen Dream is not going to be right for the North American Championship match next week. But Roderick Strong is still defending his title. He'll defend it against the winner of the next match, pitting Keith Lee against Dominic Dijakovic. One of these big lads is getting a shot at the North American Championship. And that match is right now. Lee and Dijakovic 4. This is the rubber match. The early match had a non-finish, so we're still rolling with this. Uh, they've been beasts together. They have really worked well together. These two just, you wouldn't have expected the kind of chemistry that these two guys have had and some of the moves they've pulled out but it's been really fun to watch. We start with heavy shoulder blocks. Uh, Keith Lee is working over the arm, the injured arm of Dijakovic for most of this match. Keith Lee is quite aggressively working on this arm. But this match is all about power moves. A lot of them in this as well. I'm not gonna give you every single one of them. I think you should go and experience it on the network. Uh, some of the big stuff includes uh, Dominic going up to the top rope. Looks like he's gonna hit something uh, with Keith Lee. Lee manages to push him down and Keith Lee hits a frog splash 
off the Brett rope, the most dangerous rope uh, that almost crushes the arm of Dominic Dijakovic. A bit later on in the match, they find themselves back in the corner. Dijakovic, his arm is so hurt from the attacks that Keith Lee has put on it that he can't lift him out of the corner. So he goes to pick him up over his shoulders, carries Keith Lee in an electric chair position. This is amazing. Almost as amazing as what happens next, where Keith Lee does a poison hurricane rana on Dominic Dijakovic. Of course he does. More incredible power moves before we go back for the third and final time to that top rope position. It looks like, I don't know, Keith Lee's going to hit a spinning tornado super 450 Rana off the top rope. That's probably what he was going to do before Roderick Strong hit the ring and batted him over the head with the North American Championship, giving a strike to Dijakovic for good measure as well. Roddy takes a run for it and Regal appears from the balcony at full sail and warns Roderick Strong that he's not getting away with it. Sunshine. Yes, Sunshine. Next week on NXT, we are getting Roderick Strong defending his North American Championship against Keith Lee and Dominic Dijakovic. Triple, triple threat shenanigans on NXT next week. Now, I really enjoyed this match. I really did. But I'm going to give it a B plus as opposed to an A. I think, and this is this is the uh, the champagne problem that Lee and Dijakovic have presented us with. They have given us so many great matches that the bar is so high. They've had some phenomenal encounters. This was great. It wasn't their best. I think the one thing that let it down is this match very much felt like big power move. Stalling, 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 stalling. Big power move. Stalling, 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 stalling. Big power move. Stalling, 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 stalling. Big, but you, you get the idea. That was the match. But what they did was great, and I don't want you to think this is me rubbishing Keith Lee and Dijakovic. I love them. Keith Lee's got a brilliant handshake, and he smells really nice. Not rubbishing either of these guys, and I'm excited for the triple threat next week. I think that is a necessary wrinkle to add to the Lee Dijakovic rivalry. I think that they've done as much as they can in straight up singles action. I think making it a triple threat, adding a championship in there is, is a nice addition and I'm excited to see it. The original bro is out for action. It is Matt Riddle taking on the artist formerly known as Jonah Rock, Bronson Reed. Beefy, beefy Bronson. And they start with a fist bump. Nice, respectful way to begin the match. And then it just goes off. Matt Riddle, just with strikes and kicks and punches, really outclasses Bronson Reed in the early stages of this match. Very early into this match, Matt Riddle hits the bro to sleep. He hits a power bomb and he hits the final flash, but only gets a two. That genuinely threw me. I thought, oh, okay, it's a quick one for Bronson Reed. Kicks out. Uh, Riddle goes up to the top for the floating bro. Bronson catches him in a sit-out powerbomb. Now, the camera angle slightly ruined this. The camera angle kind of made it look like Bronson botched it, I feel, when I don't think he actually did. It looked like he botched it, but he didn't. Uh, Reed's offense doesn't really last that long, unfortunately, as Matt Riddle manages to rally once again, picks him up for what looks like a tombstone pile driver, and then hits the flapjack for the one, two, three. Done. Fist bump all round. Match ends. Good showing for Bronson Reed. Uh, he didn't do a whole lot, but like the stuff he did looked really good. Matt Riddle really outclassed Bronson Reed in this match. But I'm giving it a B because I really enjoyed watching it. And I think Bronson Reed has still got a really strong upside in NXT. The returning Tegan Knox takes on Tyanara Conti in this match. Nigel McGuinness describes Tyanara with a Billy Joel song saying she can kill with a smile, she can wound with her eyes. I don't know whether you've noticed. Billy Joel has done a cover of What Happened to That Wrestler by Adam Pacitti. He's changed all the lyrics. It's disgraceful. This is all about the return of Tegan Knox back in an NXT ring after an entire year away. She's wrestled twice on NXT UK. She's back in an NXT ring and she looks great. She's in fine form. She's wrestled twice on NXT UK. Nigel McGuinness says, hey, those knee braces are holding up. She looks like she's doing great so far in her first match back. She's wrestled twice on NXT UK. Tegan Knox and Tainara Conti. Uh, this is all about Conti initially taking control of Tegan wanting to be the, uh, the, the the ruiner, the spoiler for the first match back for Tegan Knox. She's wrestled twice on NXT UK. Uh, some judo throws and kicks keep Tegan Knox at bay, but Knox manages to rally with a choke slam. 
because Kane's a favourite wrestler. I mean, Kane's all of our favourite wrestler, to be honest. Uh, hits an amazing drop into the corner. And then the shiniest wizard. One, two, three. Tegan Knox wins. I wonder if at some point they'll run a story. And hey, look, if, if anybody's watching this from, from Stanford, uh, Chips, how you doing? Your, your beard looks great today. How'd you oil it? Um, a, a story where Tegan Knox's shiny wizard gets banned because she's wearing a knee brace now, like a heavy metal knee brace. In the same way that Luger's bionic forearm was banned, that should be banned as well. You can have that. You're very welcome. Oh, and I have a wrestling postman as well. I want a wrestling postman in NXT. Thank you. Charlie Caruso is outside the ring waiting for Tegan Knox. Dakota Kai runs out as well to embrace her tag team partner. Team Kick reunited and it feels so good. But we don't get to hear any Welsh cadence on NXT this week because before Tegan Knox can start talking about her comeback match, wrestled twice on NXT UK. Out comes Shayna Baszler with the MMA horsewomen. Shayna, who just gets in the face of Dakota Kai and Tegan Knox. She says to Tegan Knox, you're running out of limbs to rehab. What do you do something important before you challenge me to a championship match? We're getting Baszler Tegan at some point down the road by the looks of it. I'm cool with that. That's exciting. Maybe there that's where you can do the whole ban the shining wizard thing. Trips, looking at you. Yeah, do it, do it, good. This whole segment gets a B from me. It's great to see Tegan Knox back in an NXT ring. She looked in great form as well, and they set up something really strong for her to come back to. Imagine like coming back and getting a championship match almost off the off, which she did in one of her two matches in NXT UK already. Just saying, let's not forget. Mm. All right. Finn Balor video package now. Balor talks about coming to a crossroads in his career and says sometimes in order to go forward, you have to retrace your steps. And that is why he is back in NXT. I like this. I think that in the grand scheme of things, and I know that if you watch the news uh, on Cultaholic's YouTube channel, that um, we talk a lot about the position of NXT. Like whether or not it's on the, the level with Raw and SmackDown, I personally believe it is beneath it, but not in a negative way, because it's sort of the, it's, it's the, the training ground, the proving ground. So it, and then you, the reward, in, a, in an ideal world, the reward should be, if you do great in NXT, you're off to Raw, you're off to SmackDown, big paydays, off to the races we go. That should be how it is. So the idea of somebody coming down to NXT to, to, to us in the know, we get why they would want to. But in storyline world, there needs to be some justification. And Finn Balor, who last time we saw him on WWE, had lost to The Fiend uh, quite decisively as well, kind of reached this point where he went, I'm not sure who I am or what I am right now. I need to go back to my roots and find it. So, oh gosh, if Finn Balor going to NXT somehow plays into him coming back to face off against The Fiend. Mwah! That'd be amazing. Boa is out. Remember Boa from last week? He's the guy that got absolutely cream crackered by Killian Dane. Uh, he's got his retribution match against Dane right now. And Boa comes out striking. Big kicks. Sends Dane to the outside. He rolls out to the outside to meet him. Just to eat that low cross body that Killian Dane does. Uh, Dane just dominates him from this point. We get a suplex. We get a long time in a face lock as well. Boa manages a bit of a comeback. Hits a couple of kicks. Only to eat a clothesline from Killian Dane, a trifecta of Vader bombs, and then he locks on this weird sort of wrist lock, sleeper, submission thing that he's doing now. So Boa's on the ground, and he's got his head locked around. I know, you know what, I know you know, I know you know what it is. I know it's got some brilliant name, and I'm the worst YouTuber of all time for not knowing the name of it. I'm a terrible, you know, fanboy wrestling fan for not knowing the name of this peculiar submission. But I don't, I don't know it. I'm gonna call it Dane Lock, the Dane, the Dane Bowers. We're gonna call it the Dane Bowers. No question, and thank you. Uh, he gets the submission from Boa. Doesn't quite let it go straight away until the referee finally says, come on, off you go. And then Killian Dane just stands there and growls. This was a C plus for me. This was probably the weakest bit of the night. It, it was fine. It slowed down in the middle. Uh, I, I think I th Dane's finisher, the Dane Bowers, <laughs> which is now what we're calling it. That is now, <laughs> that is now canon. Um, I just, I, I don't know whether we can do a more impactful finisher. The Vader bomb is fine as a finisher. Vader would love that. God rest him. Vader would love that. Not sure about this. 
We'll, we'll, we'll work on that. We'll workshop this. Main event o'clock and it's Pete Dunne versus Damian Priest. Now, before we get underway in this match, we have an altercation between Pete Dunne and Killian Dane, which ends with Pete Dunne snapping the finger of Killian Dane and walking off up the ramp. Referees and officials stop Killian Dane from heading down the ramp to batter Pete Dunne by the looks of it. I don't know whether this made Killian Dane look a bit weak after he just destroyed Boa. I don't know. I mean, it builds to Dunn versus Dane, which I'm quite excited about. Those two could have a decent knock it down drag out affair. Pete Dunn's entire offense is based initially on breaking the fingers of Damian Priest. And Priest eventually has enough of this and just decks him. Just punches him right out. Spark out with a hard punch. And then Priest takes over from there. We see Pete Dunn start to rally, though. And as Damian Priest goes up to the top rope, Dunn manages to fight out of whatever Priest was going to do and hits a avalanche superplex all the way off the top. Knocks both guys down. These two really go for it in the final act. We see Pete Dunn get a jumping armbar on Damian Priest. Priest uses the ropes to leverage a pin. Force is done to break the hold. We see a razor's edge from Damien Priest onto Pete Dunn that brings full sail to its feet. We see all six foot a million of Damien Priest come flying over the top with a somersault plancher that takes out Pete Dunn. Both guys going for a finisher, but they can't quite get a purchase on one another. Uh, they swap into gurries and big kicks. Uh, we see Damien Priest springboard off the ropes. Looks like he's going to go for a cyclone kick off the ropes. It's a big punch in the face by Pete Dunn. Jeepers, lads! Just going for it. Dunn goes for a moonsault. Eats nothing but the knees of Damien Priest. Priest picks up Dunn for the razor's edge. Dunn grabs the fingers of Priest and just forces him back down, back down. Priest pushes both of them towards the ropes, which means the ref has to break the hold. As the ref is trying to get between Dunn and Priest to break the hold, Damien Priest, bang, big kick right into Pete Dunn's little brummies. Cheeky low blow. Priest then hits the Reckoning, which is the crossroads if you're on AEW money for the one, two, three. Damian Priest beats Pete Dunne in a blinder of a main event on NXT. And the last shot we see is of Damian Priest making his way down the ramp, knowing that he had to really cheat to get that little cheeky victory in there. A stellar main event that gets an easy A from me. You can see why Pete Dunne and Damian Priest were the last match on tonight. They just tore it down. And I'm excited to see more of these guys doing other things now. I wouldn't be against seeing them go at it again, to be fair. Tonight's NXT gets a B plus from me overall. I think... And, and, and this isn't an insult. This is probably the weaker of the three weeks that we've covered since starting uh, the Wednesday Night Wars. This is probably the weakest one so far. But that's not a dig. It was still a great show. And there's still lots to look forward to. Next week, that big triple threat match for the North American Championship. It's going to be absolute gangbusters. I cannot wait to see it. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. If you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can pledge to us on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. And most importantly, don't forget to hit subscribe and join us.